Hi, George here, and I received a comment asking about how layer masks work in Affinity Photo 2, and it's fairly straightforward. I'll go ahead and do a real basic discussion here. I've used layer masks in a lot of my projects, so I'll take a look at a few of those for even more detailed instructions. But real basics, here we go. Starting off, a layer mask allows you to hide a part of a layer, like we have in here. Here's the original image, and then here's a layer with a layer mask on it. Over here on the right-hand side, you can see the layer mask, and notice how the part that's hidden is in black, and the part that you're seeing here is in white. So black hides and white shows. This is the same way that you'll find this over in programs like Adobe's Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Same thing, black hides, white shows. Okay, real basically, let me just bring a new file up here, File and New. Now it is a standard page in here. There we go, let's fill this with a different color. It's got a nice red and use the paint bucket, and we'll fill that, there we go. And let's make another layer. It's our new pixel layer right here. Choose a different color. Maybe something over in the purple range or magenta range, kind of like that. Fill that layer. Okay, we have two layers now on top of each other, a purple and a red layer. The easy way to make a layer mask is just to make a selection. So I'll grab this rectangular marquee tool, and I'll make a selection just like that. So here's our selection, and the area inside is selected. The area outside is not selected. Now to make this into a layer mask, just come down here at the bottom of the layers panel, right-hand side, and click this button here, mask layer, and it makes it into a layer mask. You see there's a layer mask. And notice that the black area is what's hidden and the white area is what's shown. Now the white outside here, that's just because these thumbnails are square and we have a non-square picture. To get rid of those marching ants, just use the Control D keyboard shortcut. And if you right-click on the layer mask, and come down here, we can invert the mask that will swap out the black and the white. And notice now that we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing the outside and not the inside. I'll do Control Z and this back out of that. There we go, back to this again. Now, one thing that's interesting here about layer masks in Affinity Photo, which is different from other programs, is that you'll see this displayed in two different ways. Notice this little arrow right here. This expands this layer and it shows you things that are acting upon that layer. So the mask is acting on that layer. See how it's just indented right down here? So a mask working on this layer. If I did something else in here, maybe I come down here, and let's just put in vibrance control. I'll leave that as is. And let's right click on this, and mask to below. And notice how this is now included in this section down here. So it's something which is acting on that layer. So you either see it this way or you can open this up and see it this way. This way you can see the full name, things like that. So two different ways of looking at the effects that are being applied, including your adjustments and layer masks being applied to that one layer. Okay, let's now see how this works on an actual picture. I'll just close this down. I'm not going to save any of that. And let's delete this one layer. Trash can and delete and show our background layer. Here we go. Here's the original. Now whenever I'm working on a picture, I always like to make a duplicate of the background, just a safety precaution. Right click over here and choose duplicate. There we go. And then I'll hide the original. And that's just my safety layer. In case this layer up here gets messed up, I can always go back to my safety layer. It's right there inside the file. It's just real easy that way. Okay, we're here on our background layer. This is our new copy. Go up here to select, come down to select subject. And then Infinity Photo goes in and finds the subject. Now this works great on pictures like this with a real even background. The busier the background, the more chance you have of this not working correctly on your edges. And you may need to do a bit of cleanup on your mask. But in most cases, this works out very, very well. And here we go. There's our selection. Now if you look really carefully at the edges, you can see there's a few little hairs poking out here. A few little hairs maybe over here poking out. Looks pretty good though. So a bit of rounding down in the corners down here. We can fix those things. Let's go over here and grab any selection tool. I'll just click on this one. What I care about is the Refine button right here. Click on that. And this brings up the Refine Selection dialog box. And in here, we can fix those edges. Simply paint over the edge you want to fix. And then Affinity Photo goes in and it re-examines that area and does a more careful job. Like our red along the bottom down here is not quite right. I'll just paint along here. Just do just a little short bit. Now the first stroke like this will take longer to do. What's happening is that Affinity Photo is now going in and examining the whole edge. It then does that piece of it, but it's done the whole edge and it now understands the whole picture a lot better. So after that first stroke, all the rest of the strokes go very, very quickly. And I like doing this in just little short strokes like that. 
Let that finish off a little bit red right here. Okay, that's good. Let's now come into a little bit just along the edge of the hair. This is a great tool for whenever you have some hair in a picture. I tend to not use this on hard edges. It normally isn't needed, but it's really nice on just little bits of hair that may be sticking out. It gives you a much better edge on that. Okay, we can output this to a lot of different things in here, including a new layer with a layer mask or just a mask. In this case, I want it at just a selection. It's better just for this discussion. Normally, I'll go to a new layer with layer mask. But for this discussion, we'll just do a selection. Choose Apply. Here's our refined selection. Now, when you have a selection, we saw this with that red square. And you want to make a layer mask. Come down here. Click on the layer mask button. There's our layer mask. You see it here. And again, notice that the area that went transparent, that's where it's showing black on your layer mask. The area that's still visible is where it's showing in white. You can use Control D to deselect that. And I can prove this. Let's just grab our paintbrush over here. Right now, I have black in the foreground. I bring my brush size up a lot bigger like that. And notice the light blue outline around the layer mask. I'm probably on this layer mask. If you're not sure, just expand that and click on your layer mask layer. So go up here, I'm on the image layer, and I'm now on the layer mask part of this. So if I paint in black over his face, you can actually see it here in the sample. Notice wherever I'm painting black, the image goes away. It's hidden. I'll use Control Z to back out of that. Let's change our color here to a white. Let's go to the foreground and we'll grab a white like that. If I paint over here in the background where it's currently black, if I paint in here white like that, you can see it over here on the layer mask thumbnail. And anywhere where it's white, it's going to be showing what's inside that area. And again, Control Z to back out of that. And that's really the basics of working with layer masks. Now, the nice thing about layer masks is that they're non-destructive. So if I hide the layer mask, there's my picture again. I haven't actually removed or erased that background. It's still here. So if I need to fix things, I have the image to fix. If you use the eraser tool to erase the background, you lose that background and you couldn't come back in and fix anything. So having a layer mask is real nice. You can see it right down here on this bottom edge. It's a little bit thin right along in there. I can fix that. Make sure we're on the layer mask side. I want to have white, and I do. Let's grab our paintbrush. And I'll change my hardness here to 100% at the top. Bring my brush size down. That's the left square bracket. And I can just paint black right onto the layer mask and clean up those areas down there. Just that easy. So it makes it real easy to come in and adjust things after you have it. And again, it's non-destructive. And that's the nice thing about using layer masks. Now you can do other fun stuff in here. Let me show you a trick. I haven't shown this on my channel before. I'll work it into a project at some point. So I have this guy here. He has a layer mask on here, hiding the background. Let's say I made a rectangle like this. So it's just a headshot right here. So here's my selection. And I come down here and I hit that layer mask button again. What I get is a second mask on here. And the second mask is working with the first mask. So you can actually have multiple masks on here to do fancier kinds of masking if you want to. So that's kind of a cute trick. So here it is without that, and here it is with that. I'm going to control D to deselect so we'll lose those marching ants. So there you go. That's the basics on how to work with layer masks. Pretty straightforward. Once you've done it a few times, it's pretty easy. The only real interesting thing here with Affinity Photo is this little drop down right there where the mask is either shown to the side over here or with the drop down, it shows underneath. That can sometimes be a bit confusing if you're used to other programs, but that's really the only difference in here is that little different way of displaying it. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about how to use Affinity Photo, I have a full video course all about this, and I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Easy to find right down there. Take a look at that. I know you'll enjoy that. Also, hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And I'll see you next time.